Okay, hi everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the call tonight. My name is Kristen Marius, and today I'm really excited to be talking to you about a book that I read this year, and it's called Colorful Personalities. So I after this book, I got a ton out of it. I learned a lot about myself, and I learned a lot that's going to help me with my team and with inviting people to my challenge group. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So let's get started here. First, we're going to welcome Peter. Welcome in Cami. We have Ashley, who welcomes Larissa. Darla has added Erin to her team, and Lori has welcomed Tori and Bonnie. So welcome to Team Inspire, guys. Next, we've got some brand new race enhancements, some brand new emeralds on our team. Congratulations to Carol on reaching emeralds. Congrats. Kim, and what a cute little family. And congrats to Tara. Now we've got some announcements for the month. We've got P90, the launch pack, which is still on sale for the month. It's on for 160 US, and I believe that's 174 Canadian. Also, the Ultimate Reset is on sale right now. Not available, not available in Canada, but if you're in the or have you at customers, all of the kits are on sale. And also on sale this month, we've got and combat. So you can check out the FAQs for the prices and the details. And then I also wanted to mention the November surge. That is coming this Saturday, November 1st, and it's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And this is a regular event that Beachbody does. It's going to be hosted by Carl Deichler, and they're going to have Top fitness trainers, Tony Horton, Shaleen, Shanti, Autumn Calabrese, and top coach Melanie Nitro. And there's going to be lots of tips and advice and everything you need to get going for the holiday season on the right foot. So make sure you tune into that. And they usually have it posted on YouTube as well as you can tune in live. Now let's get right into the call. I want to talk about the color with you. So you might be wondering how is knowing color or else are going to be useful to you well for one it helps us to understand ourselves i know that i learned a lot about myself from reading the book little things about me that i maybe didn't really understand before little quirks and now they kind of make sense now that i know about my color it helps us to understand and communicate with other people who are different from us and the fuller thinks talks and functions in its own way so it's good to know where people are coming from and why they might say or do things that they do. It offers insight into other people's values, their strengths, and things that stress them out. It allows us to understand common bonds between one another rather than judging people based on differences. And finally, it's going to give explanations for your own talents, joys, actions, and stresses. It's kind of a validation of who you are. And I wanted to get started with this quote from the book. It says, understanding and communicating with other colors in ways they value comes with huge rewards, both for them and for you. It allows you to do more of what works and less of what doesn't in all of your relationships. So of course, this is going to be beneficial for us as coaches. We're always communicating with people. A lot of it's done either online or in person, and you need to be an effective communicator to be a great coach. So the tools of the colors is something that's going to allow you to do that. So let's jump right in. I see quite a few people have listed that they are blue here. So I want to tell you all about what blue is. So blues thrive on relationships and authenticity. So these are the people that are going to put their heart into everything they do. They, their focus is to help others less fortunate than themselves. And they really value relationships. And they treat people with warmth, compassion, and caring. They're gifted in making people feel special and included, and they quickly and easily connect with other people. They're the people who see the good in everyone and everything, and they're always encouraging and supporting to others. They're also gifted communicators, and they definitely prefer meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations. So they want to be able to see you and read your face and your emotions, and they want to be able to convey their emotions as well when they're communicating with people. They're good listeners, they're empathetic, intuitive, loyal, and genuine, and they love to motivate and inspire others. So you can see that a lot of the traits 
of people who are blue are also traits of great coaches. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of people on this team that are blue. Next, here's some common things that might stress you out if you are a blue person. So people who are blue have trouble saying no, and so they often experience burnout. They are stressed out by deadlines. They can be stressed because they can be overly emotional. They're stressed out by cold or domineering people, or people who come across cold and domineering. Their feelings are hurt easily, often not making time for themselves, and they're definitely annoyed by pushy salespeople. So goals, I think I saw a few goals over there. I know I've got one or two on my team. Goals thrive on duty and responsibility. So these are people who want to focus on one thing and finishing it before moving on to the next. They're supportive and trustworthy people, and they draw a large part of their purpose and their identity from their work. They take their responsibilities very seriously. They're creatures of habits, and they enjoy routine, and they love making lists and get satisfaction from crossing items off their list. They're practical, strong-willed, confident, conservative, honest. They can make great decisions. They're the people who are driven to do the right thing, the right way, on time, and according to plan. And they're going to appreciate proper outline, detailed instructions, and an agenda before they get started on a task. They're also great at designing plans, systems, and procedures. So you might be able to guess some things that would stress someone out with this kind of a personality. So they are not going to like clutter and disorganization. They're going to be stressed out if they've got a lack of clear instructions. They also are annoyed by people who are late. They don't like a change or lack of routine. They're not going to want interruptions or last minute changes. Uh, Non-productive meetings and calls will be a stressor and also people who can't make a decision. All right, now orange. Orange people thrive on freedom and skillfulness. They have the drive to enjoy life to the fullest and they're great multitaskers. They prefer to enjoy the spontaneity of the moment. They love competition and interacting with other people. These are the people who are enthusiastic. They've got a sense of humor and a playful nature. They love to be noticed and recognized and they love being the center of attention. Their communication style they prefer is rapid back and forth exchanges. They want immediate answers, results, and feedback. These people are creative, flexible, they think on their feet, they're confident, and they're optimistic. They rewards, commissions, and bonuses. So work marketing can be a very good career for someone who is orange. They also love being physically active, they have endless, endless open mind. Adventurous. Now, if you are orange, things that might stress you out, boredom, lack of action, fix tools and policies, because oranges thrive on flexibility. They'd be stressed by a lack of choices, by meetings and deadlines, by being chained to a desk. They hate to lose, and they're going to be affected by workers, complainers, and groups. The last one is green, and people who are Green thrive on knowledge and understanding. So these people want to gather the facts and research all options before making a decision. They're calm, cool, and collected in any situation. They can be intelligent, logical, and often perfectionist. They can be counted on to provide accurate and local information and answers. They can be great leaders, and they'll pursue a lifetime of learning and growing. Strong-willed and independent, these people also need their alone time. They prefer deep discussions over small talk. They're going to be the problem solvers, visionaries, they're credible, honest, and and they're not overly emotional. Things that will stress out somebody who is green, incompetent people, meetings that have no point, rules that don't make sense, deadlines, when people don't believe they're right, because they usually are. <laughs> not enough alone time, and again, pushy salespeople. So how many of you saw some of yourself in any of those color descriptions? <laughs> I know I'm a green and I couldn't believe when I read through the green, I'm like, this is me and I'm sitting in the car reading with my husband and I'm like, this is why I am the way I am. <laughs> Definitely validation for me. 
And I'm also, who is my, so I also related to a lot of the chapter. So something that the conference give us an understanding and so it says, eyes are glass, colors, see many situations in very different ways. So an example is each color would approach something like a staff meeting or even this call right now in a different way. So the goal is they're going to want to get through it in a disciplined manner and on time. Oranges, you're just hoping I'm done quickly because you've got more important things. You're going to feel heard and happy and taken care of. And greens are going to value the discussion and the chance to think things through. Someone who's in would go back and watch the recording of this call and make some notes so they know they've got all the information. The tools of the colors allow us to look for the good enough and appreciate value. So now I want to talk a little bit about how you can use this information of your own color and other people's colors to help, to help you with coaching. So another quote, um, our strength and success comes from combining our talents with others because alone we can't be everything to everybody. When working together, we become unstoppable. It takes all four colors and an entire team effort to be successful with everyone pulling in the same direction. So I know when I, I posted this in my team page after I had read the book and I was just curious what some of the colors on my team were. And I really believe that like attracts like and that a lot of the coaches on my team are a lot like me. But when I posted the quiz, the first four people that answered were all different colors. So we had somebody from each color, just four people that answered. So it really does take a group of people that are all different colors to make a great team. So I want to give you a bit of an insight on how you might work with people who are in each of the So when it comes to coaches, if you had coaches on your team take this quiz, you might already know what color they are. And help you out. With your customers, when you're just you know, invites to people, you're probably not going to know what color they are. But um, I went to somebody era and my coaches and she's also a coach with choices seminar and she's quite familiar with the colors so I was asking her some questions and I said well what do you do when you know what color your customers are how do you use this to help you and her opinion she says that the five steps is really geared to value all of the colors it's not just great color or another it can be used with all colors but you can tweak it when you see kind of color people are so the way people on your invite is a little bit about what color they might be. People who are green are probably, are probably going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to want all the info up front. People who are orange are going to be more impatient and just want you to get stuff in a hurry. A gentle bit based on how they answer what color they might be. So anyway, let's go into working with people who are blue. So in an ideal blue, everyone would succeed. Rewards and recognition would be shared equally. They enjoy teamwork, but they don't like competition. So you might find that in those groups or in your team, you post little content that people might be really motivated at. People who are blue might not be as motivated as others. Blues make great coaches because they genuinely care about everyone they work with, and their coaches and clients can sense that. You all need to remember to be gentle in providing con constructive criticism as blues are going to take this to heart and they're very uncomfortable with conflict. They also appreciate coaches who make them feel valued and well and who understand their feelings. Uh, blues enjoy an environment where they and everyone on the team can verbalize their dreams, their ideas, where others will listen and respect their wish and imagination. Um, if you're working with someone who's blue, they're going to be in person rather than an email or call. And because Blues tend to give in long, but it's important to be sensitive to their deep feelings because often they can speak up for themselves. Coaches will be more motivated by helping others and by feed than they will, will rewards by like successful points, by recognition. But they do like a different something like that, something more important to them than like to work tirelessly in your challenge group. Page out of that. 
And two phrases never to say to a blue. One of them is whatever you want, because saying that is going to make them think, make them think they care, and they really do care. So you don't want to uh, what they're saying. Also, another thing never to say to someone who is blue is you're asking, because often they are overly, but you don't need to point that out and tell them because what they're feeling is valid. Now, working with people who are gold on your team, your gold coaches, they're going to look for clear directions and specific goals. They're going to be great team players, and they're always helpful and supportive, and they'll go above and beyond. They're very hardworking, but when they're in work mode, they don't have time for interruptions, and they don't want to stop to socialize. So these will probably be your coaches that will be great at getting their work done without getting distracted by their Facebook news feed like some of us. <laughs> they do a job because it needs doing, but they appreciate a small thank you, something practical like a certificate or a gift card. And as long as there's clear how-to templates, rules, and procedures, goals can work independently and efficiently. They feel safe with routines and predictability, and they're not going to reinvent the wheel. So if you so if you pass down some procedures and styles and things like that are practical. Gold coaches summer time. So don't be late follows, don't waste time, try to be organized. And your gold customers are going to appreciate if you under promise and over deliver. So don't make grand, but try to give them the best customer service. Loyal customers, if they're treated well, and they're going to be a huge source of your repeat customers. They're also going to be the ones that will leave voice their disaster if they've had service or promises. The best thing to do get defensive or pass the blame, just acknowledge that there was a problem, apologize, and do what you can to make up for it. Old coaches are also going to prefer to have some options and input before buying into any changes, and they value hearing the reasoning, benefits, and timelines behind these changes. They are going to be the ones who love sales and entrepreneurial because they offer freedom, less rules and routines, and not very much paperwork. And sales and marketing is also great for orange people because it offers them a chance to be paid for their success because they're quite motivated by things like commissions, bonuses, and contests. So they're going to be the ones that are working their butts off for Success Club and who are really motivated team cups. They've got great networking skills. They know a ton of people, and pretty much everybody likes them. They're not likely to read lengthy manuals and procedures. They'd rather just jump in and figure it out themselves. And they prefer hands-on learning over sitting and reading instructions. Oranges can also become quite impatient. And I learned this from one of my coaches who I found out later was an orange. She had told me that when I was doing the invite process with her, she was so impatient. She was just ready to buy and she didn't want to sit and listen to me go through all my five steps. So that's something that I've learned from the colors. Also, me all with your oranges should be short. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out, Sandra. <laughs> and they'll make decisions quickly with little discussion. Uh, when communicating, calls and texts or in person are preferred over mail and email because they want immediate answers and they'll get impatient otherwise. So orange coaches handle the invite process well usually because to them, a no is almost always a maybe. And it simply increases the challenge for them to use their charm, their humor, and their skills of persuasion. So I think we could all learn this from oranges. I know it's always a maybe. <laughs> and oranges' optimism, positivity, drive to never fail or get down on themselves, combined with a commission plan, a recognition, or even a dare, makes oranges seriously motivated. They're also generous with their money, and they can make impulsive purchases. So they're likely going to be your customers who sign up quickly, even before you're done the five-step process. Now, working with greens, they are going to be the great problem solvers on your team. They also will want all the information right off the bat. These are your coaches who are going to read the entire policies and procedures before they commit to being coached. They'll do a lot of research, and they're going to be your customers who want any information you can provide before they're ready to sign up. So they'll probably want to know all the ingredients in Shakeology, they'll want to know everything about each of the programs you've recommended before they can decide which is the best for them. Also, the calm and cool demeanor can make them hard to read and difficult to get to know. 
Greens can become annoyed and frustrated when they don't have access to reliable information or when procedures aren't logical or efficient. And you need to know your stuff when you're talking to a Green. If you bluff your way through it, you're going to lose their respect. You don't have to have all the answers. Just admit that you don't have the answers, look into it, and then get back to them. They also prefer discussions that are well articulated, concise, and to the point. And Greens need time to make decisions. So if you're pressing them for an answer, they're probably going to say no. They need time to think about it. And in the world of sales, Greens do all the research in advance. To succeed with a Green customer, you need to be credible and well-informed. And Greens can be your customers who take months to get back to you with a yes after you invite them. Now you might say, what color is yes? What color a coach do I want to try to recruit? What color challengers do I have in my group? Well, there really is no better or worse color. There's no more colors that superior. There's also no team or office, which would become more successful if there were only three or less of this color. And in our relationships, every combination of colors is ideal because love is always colorblind. Yeah, it all starts with an open heart, an open mind, and the insights of our colors. We can begin to spend looking for what we have in common instead of looking at our differences. So I think that's one of the biggest things that you can get out of this book is that you're seeing commonalities between people instead of those differences. So I just wanted to end it by showing you what the book looks like here because there's so much more to learn than just what I've been able to go over on this call. So it's Colorful Personalities by George Bolke, if I've said that right. I think at the bottom of the slide is where I got mine. That's his website, but I've also seen it on and elsewhere. So definitely a book. There's chapters on each of the colors. There's chapters on even your children and sales and people. There's all kinds of stuff. Lots of other books that are more specific as well based on the colors. So that was all I wanted to share with you guys, unless you have any questions for me. I'm by no means an expert, but I can do my best and maybe Tara can jump in if there's anything I can't answer. <laughs> no one can pronounce this name. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks, guys. I hope it's somewhat helpful. It really is a good book. Does one color quiz make more sense than the others? I don't have experience with a lot of them. I know in university I had done a different colors quiz, but it was so long ago that I don't even remember. I know at the beginning of the book he does talk a little bit about other personality assessments that are out there, but I don't know, know enough about them to compare. Yeah, Danielle, you will see a little bit of every color in you. I know I'm I'm a high green with some blue in there. I can definitely relate to the the gold. I have very little orange in me, but I'm trying to have orange. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty short book. I flew through it in one weekend, and normally it takes me a few months to read a book, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Yeah, the test is short. It's only eight questions, so it's easy. Anybody else have questions for me before I shut her down? Thanks for the call. Good night.